Hey, it's me, Jordana. I thought I'd start a vlog for a couple of reasons, I guess. Well, the main big one is because I saw my roommate doing it, and I thought it looked really awesome. And I want to copy her because she's just that awesome. <laughs> and also because since I am in New York going to college, and I will be here for the next four years, that means a majority of the next four years will be spent away from my family who lives in Florida and another portion of my family which lives in Arkansas so I won't be able to really see either of them for a majority of the year so I figured this would be a good way to keep in contact with them and just keep in touch and let them know what's going on since I won't be able to really keep in contact with them very often the first thing that was really fun I didn't really, this wasn't exactly a surprise because the very first thing I always hear when I say, oh, I'm from Florida, the very first thing I always hear is, oh, do you know how cold it's going to be? I, I know. I've heard amazing stories in every movie of New York. You see it snowing. These people wearing giant coats. And in pictures and stories, during winter time in New York, it's snowing. It, it's going to be cold. I know. In winter, I mean, in, in Florida, our winter is basically two weeks where the high is 55 degrees. Ooh, that's so cold. No, it's not. And I, I actually really hate the heat. And I actually didn't really like Florida that much weather wise. So I'm actually really happy. I personally would like a happy medium. San Francisco one day one day but until that perfect day how get to have both extremes extreme cold and then go down to Florida for extreme heat in the summer oh, perfect so oh also another thing is that it rains here a lot <laughs> that was funny because I didn't get time to buy rain boots or pack an umbrella or anything like that but I figured oh it doesn't rain too much in Florida I'll be totally cool. And I get here, my roommate's like, you know it's going to be raining for the next week, like every single day for the next week, right? What? Is it? Is this like some freak thing because of the hurricane? No. This is what New York does. It's just, this is, this is how people live. What? Okay, cool. So that sucked until I got an umbrella. It still kind of sucked, but not as much. And then I, I went to the bookstore to go get rain boots, and I saw they were $30, and then I decided that whenever it rains, I'll just take my shoes off and walk barefoot and then just put my shoes on when I'm inside a building. <laughs> At least until I get to go to Walmart and buy some cheap rain boots, because I'm really frugal. I'm not paying 30 bucks for rain boots, that's for sure. Um... My car battery died because of an unfortunate incident where somebody messed with the headlights, I don't know who, whatever, and the headlights were left on for a week, the battery was dead, and then we even got it tested, and it's definitely dead, so that got replaced, and that was, that was fun, I got a little worried because I got there and they're like, oh, well, did the lady who told you your battery would be here? Did she tell you it would be here today? Or did she tell you it would be on our truck today? She told me it would be here today. I don't, I don't know, because being on the truck and being here is a big difference. Because if it's on the truck, it can't be in my car. That's a big difference to me, because it's it's $45 to jumpstart if I have to drive back to drive back to Alfred. And that's a lot. Thankfully, they had another place that had the car battery and I was able to be on my way so that was awesome all the art classes here are really fun we're doing sculptures and drawings the drawings are starting to make my eyes hurt but that's just because they were a bunch of parallel lines for instance on Thursday we um we did a thing where he said well first he said do a bunch of doodles and I don't like the doodles too much so I won't show you them but one thing I did like was he told us to draw uh, parallel parallel lines that reach from one edge of the paper to the other. Um, they weren't curved, blah, blah, blah. And 
I know the definition of parallel, they don't intersect. But then he showed us an example and, and he and he intersected them and he's like, Can I do this? And he nodded. So I was like, Oh cool, he's changing the rules. So I went and I did this. I actually really liked it a lot better, but apparently I did the assignment wrong. Apparently we were supposed to do this. But it was cool because I did do that in the after class. Anyway, so um I personally like the first one better because it's more compositionally pleasing to the eye, at least to me, because of the density, plays on space, movement, etc. so forth, insert other elements and principles of design, blah blah blah. <laughs> but one thing that I did like about this was that, I don't know how many other people did it, but I purposely stopped um, part of the way through with the lines to, to see how my emotional state would affect something as simple as a straight line and I was actually really happy because Ted said that he thought that was really interesting and he actually looked surprised so I don't think I really I think it's I think it's a little hard to surprise the art teachers so it made me kind of happy like for instance um this is the beginning where I was really focused I was paying attention this is where they started to intersect and I lost focus and then I regained focus and then I stopped this is where I kind of angrily waited for my car battery because it took them like 15 minutes and I just kind of got bored with a while. And then I stopped and then I came back and I focused a little bit. This was after having lunch and I was happy and content that the day was done. Well, I had dinner technically because lunch was over. I had food and I was content because the day was done. And I found a parking space in front of the building. It was fantastic. I don't have to walk to my car. Ugh, I don't have to walk four miles uphill both ways to get to my car now. Like... Grandpa used to walk to school, you know, whatever. And then this is where I got tired. Came back another time to see what happened. The, the line started to curve and get odd. And I really like it. The point of it was to to show how some how it how it has rhythm, how it ha how you can see the sound, how you can hear it, even though it is it is only a picture. And I thought that was really neat because it kind of reminds me of Jackson Pollock's work because. A lot of his stuff was inspired, um, well, his stuff was inspired by a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of abstract artists who have their work inspired by music, and then it shows through the canvas what kind of music they were listening to, what they were feeling at the time they were listening to the music, and I think it's really neat in that sense. Um, for the sculpture class, currently we have to make a, a giant cardboard sculpture. I know, everybody must be sick of cardboard from that. I don't know, I'm, I'm not quite sick of it yet. I might be by the end of this project, but so far I'm not yet, so let's hold out hope I, I can last. <laughs> I'll be making um, a dragonfly scorpion hybrid, and it's basically, uh, the eye is going to be at least this big, because it has to be giant, it has to be organic, and I got, this is my patient zero hexagon that I'll be cutting out. I don't remember if it's a hexagon or a hectagon. I don't care if you correct me. I know what shape I'm talking about, and that's all I care about. I don't care if I know the technical term. <laughs> and this is also hectagon number 133. And then from the eye, four wings are going to sprout out, two on each side, because dragonflies have four wings. One of them is going to come straight out, and the other one's going to wrap around, sort of like a mesh covering. And then the tail will back out, go through two of the wings, curve backwards and then four towards the viewer and transform into a scorpion tail because I also like scorpions and that's the extent of my fun little art project um another thing that I really like about the drawing class is my newfound appreciation for abstract art um in AP art history I sort of got an appreciation for abstract art it wasn't quite all abstract art it was it was nice it's pretty, I mean, it's sort of pretty. I mean, I understood its importance to art as a whole. I understood its importance to art history. I understood its importance to changing people's views about what art is. I, I, I understood why this was important, you know, why it needed to be done. But it just, it wasn't my thing. I do very representational, very literal art. 
and I always have. I mean, there, there's some things that are a little abstract, but nothing truly abstract in the definition of the word that we're used to. Nothing truly abstract. So when we looked at a bunch of abstract things and we talked about them and we looked at them, I actually found myself getting an appreciation for them. And, and it was odd because I was struck by um, a memory because we, we actually looked at a painting by a man. I can't remember his first name. I think it was start the first name started with a K. He was he was Russian. And his last name was like Molovich or whatever. And at least I think he was Russian. I don't know. Um and so he made this painting and he called it like a supremacist painting. And he was this was made like the early nineteen hundreds. So this is it was it looked a lot more modern than it really was. And it was basically a white canvas, a giant white canvas, and in the middle of that white canvas was a single black square. And it was funny because I reflected on it, and I remembered how right after 8th grade, we took this fantastic vacation to San Francisco, and I loved every minute of it. And of course, I loved art even then, so I couldn't wait to go to the San Francisco Museum of Fine Art. And then when we went to the when we got to the really really modern section, I was really thrown off by a lot of things. And I don't think "thrown off" is really a, a good word. I think "turned off" is a better word because there was a, there was a, a painting. It was a giant canvas. I could literally have three people stand on my shoulders, one on top of the other, and they might be able to touch the top of this canvas. It was so huge. And it was just painted blue. Not even different shades of blue, but just one shade of blue. There, there wasn't really even texture to it. It wasn't like it was really layered. It was just one solid, opaque shade of the same shade of blue. And it was, it was art. And it was in a museum. And it was important. And I, I couldn't possibly fathom why. I mean, honestly, I kind of thought it was crap <laughs> at the time. I didn't want to sound uneducated or ignorant, so I didn't say it. But I honestly thought it was crap, and I couldn't understand how anyone could possibly think that was art. And then, you know, now, look back on it, and they're kind of similar. In my mind, the simplicity of it was similar. And it's odd. I don't think I could, I don't think I'll ever really grow to appreciate that one blue painting. I don't even remember the artist's name. I really don't. I just remember that giant blue canvas. But it was just, I've really grown to appreciate abstract art more and I'm actually trying and I actually really like it. It's really fun. I'm actually setting up my room more. Uh, my old room had five billion photos on it everywhere and I've only begun to set up first bit of them over here. I'll get more eventually after I get the damage free hanging. But I'm gonna wait to go to Walmart because another fun fact about New York that I didn't know as a Floridian is that the sales tax changes per county. And here it's eight point five and about uh ten miles away it's uh, eight percent or something and this greatly confused and actually kind of angered me because in Florida it's statewide seven percent so when I went to go buy an umbrella I was so confused as to why it was so much more expensive because I pre-calculate the sales tax in my mind and so that was fun um, we now have food in the microwave. I got care packages with food. I was so happy I got cookies, tea. I love my tea. Oh, I love tea so much. And we got a microwave so I can cook all my food. And then I actually went to Wegmans, which is awesome. They have such good prices. And then I got more food. So now when I'm up at 5 a.m. working on an art project, I won't have to go hungry. Yay! And this video actually has gone on entirely far too long, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Pretty much the only people that will be watching this most likely are just 
family and friends that are just curious to know how I'm doing, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll probably do my best to make the next one a lot shorter. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for tonight. I hope you all sleep well. And that's pretty much it for tonight. Good night.